Hi, I'm Darai. I grew up in a Rabe estate. I come from a Hindu family. But by the time I was 30, I came to know the Lord. I remember, uh, you know, I got saved in 84. 85, there was an altar call. The altar call was simply this. If God were to call you to come into full time, not today, not tomorrow, but down the road in the future, would you say yes? There was a stirring in my heart at that time, you know. I don't know why there was such a prompting. And I, and I responded to it. That was 1985. The similar call was made in 1986 and 87, and I responded the same. That time I was still lecturing in 1988. I'm supposed to get married, go and do my PhD. But that is the time I had a vision uh, of the Lord. And this is on campus, you know, and the Lord said to me, would you lay down your PhD for me? That was the turning point. Then I waited to finish my contract, which I ended in end of 91, then 92. I joined the church here in Full Gospel Assembly as a pastor. Did, did I process this with other people or did other people process this with me? Uh, you know, first time I had a call, uh, after having responded, nobody spoke to me. Nobody sat down and really talked to you and said, how will that look like? But today I look back, we ought to process it. But how do you know therefore that this is of God then, if you didn't process it? Well, I think it is time because that is not just one call, 85, there was 86, 87. And then in the course of time, uh, I was already in ministry, you know, even though I was working in the university, I was actually serving. But you know where it was processed? <laughs> when I have to leave the university, when I had, when I had to lay down my PhD, uh, that was the point of processing. First, I had to speak to my, of course, my, my wife. Uh, and then I have to speak to the dean of my faculty and I had to process it with him three times. And that, then I also had to process it with, uh, that time, our late Dr. Ko. Uh, and I had to process it with my parents. If you have received a call from the Lord and God who calls, I, need to, I think you need to get back to God and ask uh, when and how and where. And that's where I think other people can come in to, to process this. I think the only positive part was, of course, my, of course my wife agreed. And then my, of course, Dr. Ko, you know, that was, but the rest all, they were trying to uh, talk out, me out of it. Uh, and, and the primary reason, especially from the family side, was finance. Uh, but you know, at that time, our, our trust in God seems to be so great <laughs> that we seem to ride over that concern. It's real though, it's real. No, it's like a mountain that you see, but the faith causes you to rise above that mountain of financial need and to step into the full-time calling. I think teaching is a, is a gift that I had. And then uh, when I joined the church, guess what? I was teaching. <laughs> That's why the mission department became a training institute, you know. And so, and, and the church uh, gave me that platform to teach at various levels. I was in, in the Bible college as well. I was in the mission department, I was also in the pastoral department. So I had a lot of opportunities to teach. So I was operating in the gifting that God had uh, given me. It's very satisfying you know, when you are doing what you have been called to do. And I must also say that it is along the call of your giftings, your giftings, your giftings, your giftings. Because if they put me into something else, then it will be very tough. If someone comes to me and talks to me, I'll, first of all what I'll do is, Talk to them about giftings. What giftings do they have? And then find out what sectors in which that gifting can operate. And actually tell them that as they operate in that gifting, they are serving the call that God had called them in. Even though it may not be the church. Your calling need not necessarily be confined to full-time calling. Why not working in the, in the university a full-time calling? Why not serving as a doctor in the hospital a full-time calling? Why not working in the business world as a full-time calling? So, but I think you need to uh, remember that the calling uh, is along your lines of gifting and can be in different sectors. And it is therefore not confined to just the church. Now, why do I say that? Because if you have a calling, the church itself doesn't have the full range of all those areas in which your calling can be worked out. For me, the fruit of obedience is, I usually have three, I mean three or four. Number one, 
Uh, how do you know that this is actually the call, huh? the fruit of obedience? Number one is when you do it, huh, there is joy. Number two, you will be successful in the sense that it becomes a service to other people. The third one is that people want to come and learn from you. I said, could you, could you, could you tell us uh, how do you do this? And the fourth one is that you'll reproduce yourself, meaning you will have apprentices around you. <laughs> Disciples, so to speak, around you, where you can actually disciple them. And so after retirement, I started to preach the gospel and to disciple people and cause a multiplication and a movement. Even though the calling came through full time within a church setting, even though I stepped out of the church, I still functioned in the calling.